Yeah. So we're discussing um, the beginning of unit three. Uh, we're doing lesson number one on correlation. So uh, here are the notes. And in statistics, we're often interested in studying the relationship between two variables by measuring both variables on the same individuals. Um, and so give you kind of a good example of what we could be doing. Like say, for example, um, I have like 10 students and I ask each student to write down their height in inches and their weight in pounds. So obviously I'm looking at two variables, height and weight on each person. And if I wanna see how that's related, like for example, is a taller person necessarily gonna be heavier or a short person gonna be lighter? Like, you know, I'm kind of curious about that, right? Um, some previous knowledge uh, in algebra, remember the X coordinate is the independent variable. The Y coordinate is the independent variable, sorry, is a dependent variable. <clears throat> um, these words have other meaning statistics, so we'll not use them when describing plots on a coordinate plane. But um, we'll use uh, y as like the response variable. So uh, the response, basically, like if you uh, change something, what is the response? What will happen? Um, the explanatory variable will be x, and that will um, explain or uh, cause a change in the response variable. Uh, sometimes there won't be any relationship, and we'll investigate that as well. So let's look at example one. And say determine whether surgery or chemotherapy results in higher survival rates for a certain type of cancer, whether or not the patient survived is one variable, and whether they receive surgery or chemotherapy is the other. Um, so which is explanatory variable, which is the response variable. So in this case, um, we can control the treatment, right? So the treatment, we can control. Whether they live or not, we can't control. So this would be X and this would be Y, or we would call this the response variable and we would call this the explanatory variable. So one way you could think of this is that um, if a patient survived, can we explain why they survived? Maybe because they got surgery, maybe they took a, you know, a, a more um, <clears throat> recent um, or more um, updated dose of chemotherapy or um, a new drug that came onto the market. Um, or if they didn't survive, um, maybe because they, um, took chemotherapy a little too late, or maybe they didn't do chemo, or they didn't do the right surgery. Um, so whether they live or not is, res responds to how we treat them. So the treatment we do can explain why someone lives or dies. Um, so that's one way you can kind of think of it. So explanatory variables can be the treatment. The response, the response variables can be survival. So that's how we have to look at that. Uh, because whether you live or not responds to the treatment you get. Hope that makes sense. Um, but we're going to start looking at more quantitative data because these are more yes, no questions like yes, you received surgery or chemo or, or you did not, or yes or no, you, you lived or, or didn't live. Uh, so let's graph the relationships between two quantities, but we're going to deal, deal with more numerical stuff. So we're going to graph the relationship between two quantitative variables measuring the same individuals. And if we do see there's some sort of relationship, um, we'll definitely um, plot the points. Um, and sometimes we can also add like a categorical variable or different plot color. So it's little things we can do here. And these are some of the things that we're gonna access. Um, just so you know, we're gonna be using the stat button in the calculator and Y equals <clears throat> and the graph button. And just to know where these things are located, this is under stat. You would find this under second y equals, and of course, this will be the graph button. Okay, let's keep moving. Interpreting scatter plots. So a scatter plot looks like this. We have a bunch of points scattered around. 
we're going to look for overall patterns or deviations from patterns like outliers. And we're going to try to describe them by form, direction, and strength. Um, direction meaning whether it's a positive slope or we say like a positive association. or negative association. Form, whether this can be linear, quadratic, and so on. And strength will be um, How close together are the data points? So we're going to have that discussion as well. Now, the form of a scatter plot, uh, typically we're going to be looking at this from a linear perspective. But it can be quadratic, exponential, logarithmic, or other functions. But usually we're going to be focusing on linear. Just keep things simple. The direction, again, pause association. So think of a positive slope. Um, so what they're saying here, above average values of one variable tend to accompany above average values of the other variable, or below average values tend to occur together. So like a good example would be if we looked at, like, say, um, Yeah, oh, height and weight. We'll look at that. Like I would probably expect a positive association for this scatter plot here, because those who tend to um, be above average for the height tend to be above average for weight, and vice versa. Uh, negative association would go the other direction, like a negative slope. So let's say, for example, we look at um, hours playing video games per week. And your GPA. Now, I could be wrong here. But I would kind of gather that if um, you play a lot of video games, <laughs> you're probably not going to do well in school. I don't know. So you might see something kind of like this here. So you would see a negative association. So those who um, play video games more than your average student might have a GPA that's lower than the average student and vice versa. Mr. Amashni, I have a quick question. Yeah, far away. Mm -hmm. um, in, when does causation versus correlation come into play? Like, Here. how do you determine it? So first of all, um, first of all, um, so correlation... Um, is not causation. I, I think that's the one thing we have to talk about is that just because two things are correlated very well does not mean it causes, like, I'll, I'll give you a good example. Um, like, if someone plays a lot of hours of video games, will that cause them to get a low GPA? Not necessarily. We can't say it, but we could say there's an association, like there's, there's a connection there. We can't say it causes it. So that's just more of a kind of a general thing we just always have to keep in our back pocket that, um, um, so, so yes, we are we are talking about that here, um, but I think the key thing is that correlation is not causation. Just because things are correlated doesn't mean it causes. We're we're, we're never going to talk about what causes something. We don't know. Like, I mean, why did someone get a low GPA if they play a lot of video games? Maybe there might be another reason. Maybe their girlfriend or boyfriend broke up with them. Maybe they have a family health issue. Um, who knows? I mean, there's a lot of a uh, lot of bright, you know, a lot of reasons where that could happen, but. Can we see there's a correlation? Sure. And then you would investigate that, but you can't necessarily make that conclusion that correlation, things that are correlated would necessarily cause it from happening. So that's kind of um, kind of the general kind of view of it. Um, we will talk about the strength of scatter plot, like how tight the, um, the data points are with each other, like how close together they are. Uh, do they tend to follow a straight line very nicely? Um, so we're going to talk about that as well. So we're going to talk about the form, whether it's linear, quadratic, direction, positive, negative association, and the strength. 
uh, which is really going to deal with correlation. So measuring limb strength and direction, um, and that's looking at correlation, which is going to be the main topic here for today. So basically, how closely does a straight line fit the scatter plot? So there's something called the correlation coefficient. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite statistical um, variables to look at, or statistical metrics, I guess you want to call it that. So it tells us two things. It will tell us the strength of the relationship and the direction of the relationship. So R is some wacky number that has a wacky formula. Well, it's not, it's not really a wacky number, but it's just the formula is really wacky. Um, it ranges between negative one and one. So R is between these two numbers. Um, if you have R equals one, that means you have a perfectly positive linear relationship between your two variables. If R is negative one, that means you have a perfectly negative relationship between your two variables. If R is zero, then it's kind of like the, there's no really no relationship. It's like if you did a scatter plot, the scatter plot would be like all over the map, like this. Whereas R equals one, the data points will kind of follow a nice linear pattern, where R equals negative one, it follows a nice linear pattern, but it's the negative slope. Um, so that's um, how we interpret R. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about how to calculate in just a little bit and how to use a calculator or uh, Google Sheets to get that for you. Um, you gotta be doing with quantitative variables, mind you. Um, and those things between response and explanatory variables. So what's meant by that is that um, there's, there's no, um, you know, they, they all deal with the same person, right? So like, for example, if I'm looking at uh, GPA and um, um, hours playing video game, you know, those two variables are dealing with the same person. Um, so that's what's meant by no distinction. Uh, R does not have any units. It's a unitless uh, metric. Uh, does not change um, whether you use feet or inches. Like, so if, say for example, I was looking at the correlation between weight and height. If everyone gave me their height, their weight in um, kilograms and their height in meters, it, it wouldn't change it, whether if I did with pounds and inches. But of course, you have to make sure all the data points follow the same units. Um, outliers um, can mess up your correlations. So we'll talk about that. And we're going to talk about how to actually treat outliers um, later in the semester. Probably in December, we'll, we'll do that. And then that will play a role in the project we'll do in the spring. Question in the chat room? Okay, no problem. Take your time. Um, and sometimes when groups are combined inappropriately, it may mask other relationships, like a third variable. So those are things, again, we'll, we'll explore later in the semester. Um, groups may have different relationships when separated. So those are some other things you can consider. But um, I think outliers are one thing that we probably will keep a closer eye on more than anything else. Now, how is R calculated? It's a very funky calculation. I would not expect you guys to do it by hand. So I would say this is a complex calculation and don't do by hand. <laughs> I would not recommend that. Instead, we'll use the calculator or we'll use um, Google spreadsheets. But the way it would work, if you were to do it by hand, um, like say, for example, we're looking at um, uh, eight, is it eight? No, nine different restaurants. So we're looking at nine restaurants. And let's say we pick the most popular meal from each of those restaurants. And we say, okay, how many calories is that meal? How many grams of fat does, does that meal have? So let's say like, um, let's say restaurant A is like Chick-fil-A. And like my favorite is the um, uh, spicy chicken sandwich with um, waffle fries, right? So that's the, say it's, say it's the most, that's the most popular meal. So that's 120 calories, 46. I, I don't think it's that much, but I hope it's not that much. <laughs> uh, let's say B's in and out. And let's say uh, the most popular meal is a double double with uh, their fresh cut fries, right? Let's say restaurant C could be um, uh, Chipotle. And maybe it's like a carne soda burrito. Has that many, you know? That, so, you kind of get the point, or like this one could be like uh, Burger King. It's like the Whopper with like their French fries. I don't know. I'm just kind of just being hypothetical here, but 
But what we're going to do for number one, let's calculate what N is, the average calories, the average grams of fat, the standard deviations of each. So I'll do number one right here. Now N's going to be nine. That's easy. N is simply the total number of, um, of items you're dealing with. How many items am I dealing with? I'm dealing with nine items or food from nine restaurants. Or what if I uh, have nine people in my classroom and I ask them for their weights and heights and it would be nine because I have nine students, right? So it's basically the number of items slash observations. So that's easy, that's N. And we use that often for uh, representing how many total things you're looking at. Now to find the averages and standard deviations, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this in the calculator. I'm also gonna do this in a um, Google spreadsheet. So I'll do it two ways. So if I do this in a calculator, um, and actually I probably should have sent the thing to my WhatsApp here. So I'll walk you guys through this. So you can hit stat, and you're gonna select edit. And you're gonna see um, a bunch of columns. Now, this is actually from a student I was working with last night because I do tutor some students and stats. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and clear these. So to clear, it's real easy. You just hit the up key, have L1 highlight and just hit clear. It clears whatever was there previously. And like goes with L2. Now, I'm opening up a second screen because uh, I don't wanna keep going back and forth. So let me just open up the notes here. Give me one second. Um, such notes. There we go. Unit three. Unit three. Lesson number one. Okay. So what I'm going to do is under L1, I'm going to put all the, the calories. So 720, 530, 510, 500, 305, 410, 440, 320, and 598. Now I'm going to put the grams of fat right next to it. And you got to make sure you go in the right order because 720 is with 46, 530 is with 30, and so forth. Now, as you can imagine, I would think more calories would probably lead to more fat. Um, that's just something that's just not. I just kind of observing that uh, by the eye test. Okay. Then what you can do is hit stat again. You go to calc and you pick option one, one variable stats. And obviously um, you're gonna be looking at, um, we're gonna look at L1 right now. So it's gonna give us all the stats for L1. Or actually we could do this. I just realized we could do uh, something else. If we go stat, Calc, let's do two variable stats. This way we can get both um, the averages and standard deviations for both lists. So we're going to calculate it. So it's going to give us the average for X, which is 449.44. And it'll give us a standard deviation. Now there's two standard deviations you, you can go with. I'm going to go with um, the one that says Sigma X. Um, there's a difference between these two. One's called a sample standard deviation, one's called a population. So this is called a sample. That's called standard deviation. A sample standard deviation is when, um, sorry, I'm gonna say population here. A sample standard deviation would be like, uh, let's say you're uh, polling a bunch of people, how they're gonna vote in the election next Tuesday, right? And maybe we'll let's not talk, we talk about present all the time. Let's talk about one of the propositions, maybe the one about Uber and Lyft, uh, whether they should be independent contractors or employees, right? Um, so obviously that's something Californians are voting on. Um, if, and there's a lot of Californians, right? <laughs> that are they're eligible to vote. Um, I wouldn't um, pull all the Californians, that'd be really uh, not terribly efficient, but maybe pull maybe a thousand Californians. And so you're taking a sample from a population. So you would use this kind of standard deviation in, the, in that case. But let's say, for example, um, 
have 20 students in my class. And I, um, I ask them, um, um, how many books do you have in your house? Okay. So, um, and I wanted to get the standard deviation there. Because I surveyed the entire population in my classroom, I would use this. And because I'm dealing with just, you know, I, I'm not looking at all restaurants that serve fast food hamburgers. I'm just looking at these nine particular restaurants. So I'm dealing with my whole population. So I'll be, I'll be using the Sigma X, I'll be using 184 point, um, oh, even though it does says use um, SX, which is actually a little interesting. Um, yeah, I find that a little bit confusing in the formula. We'll, we'll, we'll use Sigma X instead. Um, so, so 449 and 184. So we go back to notes. Ends nine. Um, the mean, we'll call this X, we'll call this Y. So mean is 449 roughly. And standard deviation for X was um, 184. Then let's look at Y. If I just hit the down key, I get 25 and 9.3. So we'll say 25 and 9.3. So that's done. Now it says to use the values from, tape from number one and the individual data points to calculate R below. Now that's gonna be a pain in the ass, part of my language. I'm not gonna ask you guys yet. The way that would work, I'll just kind of quickly show you what would happen. You would wind up doing something like this here. And I'm not gonna ask you guys to do that. That would just not be right. But you would wind up doing this. Your R would equal one over nine minus one times sigma. And you would first do um, your first data point for X is 720 minus the mean for X, which was 449, divided by the standard deviation, which was uh, 184 times. Um, the y value for that was 46, because the grams, grams of fat, minus the mean for grams of fat, which is 25. Over that standard deviation is 9.3. Um, then you're going to add that to the next data point. So that's going to be 5.30 and 30. And you keep doing this over and over again. <laughs> so you can see why this would be a pain in the ass. You don't want to do this by hand. <laughs> It'd be absolutely insane. I actually, when I was in college, when I took stats, I think I wound up doing this by hand. And I was about, about to, um, you know, just go crazy because it was just, it's just not terribly efficient. So instead, what we can do, the calculator can do this very nicely for us. Here's what you do. Um, if I hit the down key, it might give me the correlation. No, it does not. Okay. So this is another way you could do it too. If you hit stat, calc, and you can pick option four, lin rec. So what you're doing is you're asking the calculator to graph a linear regression function or to come up with the, um, the best fit line. And actually, um, we'll just hit calculate for now. So it gives me um, some fu a function here. Now that's something we're going to explore in a couple of weeks. But what you do then is you go to um, bars, option five, EQ, option seven. I am recording this so you guys can watch it again. And it gives me the R value. So R value here is 0.863. Um, Let's actually um, do this in a Google spreadsheet. This will make our lives a little easier. 
Um, so if I go to Google Spreadsheet, you do it this way. So I have to type in all the data points again. So 720, 530, 510, 500, 305. And don't worry if you, if you didn't quite follow how I got R in the calculator, because I'm going to show you guys again. So um, it'll take some time before you guys feel comfortable finding it. But I think it's a lot easier in the Google spreadsheet. <clears throat> Personally, that's what I do um, when I want to see how something's correlated. Then what you do is you hit equals and hit coral. And you simply select these cells here for the comma. So it should be A9, comma, and then these cells here. I think this is the correlation. Now, interestingly, it gave me a different value. Don't know why it's giving me something different than what the calculator gave. That is... Um, Mr. E. Yes, go ahead. Um, I got a different R on the calculator than you did. I may have punched, punched something wrong then. Hold on. It's Well, it's also different than what the Google spreadsheet gave you. Oh, is that interesting? It's like okay. right in between, I think. That is strange. <laughs> okay. Uh, hold on. I'm seeing if I punch this all incorrectly. 26, 30, 27, 26, 30. Huh. Well, I made a mistake here. This should be 320. Okay, so I, I caught my error there. Okay, so I should get a different answer now. So what I do is I go to stat, calc, option four. What this does, this, um, this runs a regression analysis between my two uh, lists. I go to vars, option five. EQ, option seven. Okay. So you may have punched something in wrong, Will. <laughs> so, because I did in the calculator. So you may want to double check what, um, the numbers again, because uh, I'm getting the same thing as the Google spreadsheet as well. Okay. Yeah. So this is a strong correlation. This is very, very strong. Um, and we're going to go, go deep with this down the road. Um, and I think it's a very fascinating. Um, metric because that because I think it, it helps to really explain like why certain things happen the way they do. Um, I use it often in, in my own sports analysis when I'm trying to predict how players might perform or how teams might perform. Um, we're looking at like if concern metrics correlate well with like a team's win percentage. Um, I think it's fascinating stuff. I, I really um, think even if you're not into sports, I know some of you guys are not. Uh, but you can also use it for a lot of other things too in life. It doesn't have to be um, in the world of sports, obviously. Um, it could be with like stock market, like maybe you're looking how a stock might improve based upon, um, you know, their earnings. You know, you would imagine if a company has stronger earnings, probably has a stronger stock price um, or might see stronger stock uh, increases in price. Uh, you could look at it in terms of like maybe um, um, income versus if you're looking at something social, like what are, what's the median income and the um, incidence of crime in an area. Uh, that would be interesting to have to look at. And I would I would assume, I mean, it's, it's kind of sad to say this, but I would say, um, you know, there's a negative association, right? Like, you know, in areas that are more impoverished, uh, you tend to see more crime, sadly. Areas that are um, more affluent, um, crime is going to be less. Like, do we see many car break-ins or um, violent crimes, perhaps, in Atherton compared to, say, maybe San Francisco or San Jose? You know, no, we don't, right? Uh, there's a lot of money here. Um, so, you know, it's, and, and, and of course you could talk about the social implications behind all that. This might be something you guys might want to think about for your project. If you want you know, to do something that's very social, that would be a great idea. Um, that's beautiful. And I'm not going to, um, well, actually we have a little bit of time. Um, let me quickly do this. So, so you guys can actually see the, the computation in, uh, and so this way you guys have access to it in the spreadsheet here. Let's say I actually were to compute, um, you know, if I were to actually use a formula. So, like, so this is X, this is Y, and I'm actually going to do um, X mean 
x standard deviation, y mean, and y standard deviation. So I'm going to do equals average of all this equals standard deviation. And I guess I'm going to do the sample standard deviation because that's what I see in the formula. I know it's doing the population one, um, but let's just do that instead. Um, and then equals average and equals um, standard deviation. We'll do the sample. Just you know, for the uh, standard deviation, standard deviation is defined as this. It's like your sum of all the difference of squares divided by n. The sample standard deviation divides by n minus one. So, you know. so that's the difference between the two. The denominator is a little one smaller. Um, so it's like an adjustment. And then if I were to do this, um, <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, if I were to do um, A2 minus the mean, which was um, B13, so dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign B, dollar sign 13, divided by its standard deviation, which was uh, B14. And I got to surround that in parentheses. Times. If I do um, B2 minus um, B15, the Y mean, so I'm using the, um, the regression formula that we see the X, XI minus X bar over SX, YI minus Y bar over SY. This is just to you know, prove that this formula works to you. Um, dollar sign B, dollar sign 15, divided by, um, dollar sign B, dollar sign 16. Okay, I think that would make sense. Okay, and if I just do that, then what I'm gonna do is going to add up all those numbers and divide by n minus one. Or in this case, divide by eight, because n is nine. I get the same thing. So I know the formula works. And actually, it looks like it is a sample standard deviation. I was incorrect. I thought it was a population standard deviation we're using. I don't know why I use a sample standard deviation for that. But anyway, but you can see that's not something you really want to do by hand. <laughs> it's just easier to do correlation. It just gives, it gives you the answer. Just, just very nice. Hopefully, yeah, you guys have a, a little bit better understanding of how correlation um, works. Um, and if we go back to the notes again, um, so again, like uh, these are some of the different things we did, like uh, linear regression. Um, and actually, it looks like I probably should. Um, Turn that on. Let's go back to the calculator. Um, how did they get? Let's go to the catalog. So there's a lot of things here. No idea that these things existed. Yeah, let me do that. Okay. So if I go back to notes again, we, we knew how to get here. So to get the linear reg, remember we did um, stat, calc, option four. That's how we got there. And it, gave, it usually would give you a formula. Here, it's, so there I had second, um, I think it was a second um, 
zero button. And I guess if I run linear reg, it actually will give this to me, which is really nice. So let me go back again to my calculator. And I will go ahead and clear this. So if I go to stat, calc, option four. And now I'm going to store the regression equation as um, a y variable. I'm going to store it as y1. The way I did that, we hit alpha trace and pick y1. And I'll calculate. So now it does give me the r value. Uh, r squared is another thing that's kind of interesting. We're going to have that discussion next week. I'm not ready for that today. Um, now, what I could do if I want to graph this, because I did talk about in the notes that um, we could plot the stuff, as you see here. So you could do is if you go to y equals, you can see the, the regression equation is there now. If it's second y equals, I'm going to turn on plot one. So I want it turned on. I want a scatter plot. My x list is L1, my y list is L2. You can get you know, do different like markings if you want. It doesn't really matter. I've hit graph. You're not gonna really see much. That's because my uh, window is not really set for what we're dealing with. Remember, we're dealing with calories for X. So I'll probably go from zero to like maybe a thousand. And I'll make the y X go 100. The Y, uh, we're doing fat, like we'll maybe go from zero to like say 100. We'll make that scale 10. So it all depends on the variables you're dealing with and, the, and, and what numbers you're seeing. So now I can see the scatter plot and I can see the best fit line. And the best fit line fits through it pretty, pretty well. It's actually a pretty good um, prediction model. Um, if you do it in a Google spreadsheet, it's probably a little easier to do it here. You would just wanna just highlight those cells, go to insert. Um, Hold on a sec, you, you're usually better at this. Oh, chart, there we go, go chart. And there we go, just gives me, a, just knows it gives me, gives me a scatter plot. And if I um, click on the data points or right click, I can actually have it um, add, um, I'm usually better at this on Microsoft Excel, just you know. I think I have to go over here Yeah, and I think if you go to trend line and linear, and I want it to show the R square value, and I also want it to give me the equation. <clears throat> it gives me the equation right there also. And it gives me the R square value. I mean, I want R obviously, but um, so you could also do it in a, in a Google spreadsheet as well. Uh, so this can be very, very powerful stuff. Uh, in case you're curious, uh, <laughs> um, how do I do this in the world of sports? Let me just show you really quickly, and then I'm going to um, tell you guys what your homework is. I'm in class a little early today. Um, so as you guys know, I'm a big um, sports now. I'm going to stop recording right now.